of 72 Pick Connection. With me today is Tom Sup? And once again, myself, Eric Fine. And as you probably noticed, what the fuck's up with this new display? Where is everyone? No one's fucking here. No it's, one. Yeah, they fucking ditched us. So um, if you've been watching this for any time in the last month, you've heard the hype of Adam and Josh that they've got tickets to RLCS, which is now. Yeah. Actually, in fact, there's a match currently going on. Um, so they are currently at that, and we will be getting an update from them later in the show. But for the most part, it is just going to be us this week. Adam and Josh are bringing the 7-2 PC hype to Los Angeles, I want to say. Yes, yep. correct, sir. So the heart of Los Angeles, Rocket League World Championships, 7-2 Pin Connector representing. And it, this would be a lot more exciting if they were here to like, you know, like cheer a, yeah. or something. Yeah. But just, just imagine it. That's what's happening right now. Uh, they do have 72 Pin Connector shirts that they are wearing, which is just fucking rad. Uh, we should have those hopefully soon. Yes. Um, I'm hoping. Um, Josh should be shipping those out to us. But yeah, they, they're they pretty rad. Y'all should probably check those out sometime. But either way, Tom, how has your week been? Fucking busy. Again. What's I mean, new? you know, the moving stuff and job stuff and... Okay, so let's just dive right into it. I made burgers for the first time with something, not making burgers for the first time, uh, but I decided to toast my own buns on a skillet with some butter, sesame buns. Okay. It completely changed the entire dynamic of the burger. Right? I make an okay burger. They're not amazing. They're not fantastic, but they're okay. Um, but the toasted bun brings it to an entirely different level. Like, holy shit. Just get, like, a little bit of golden brown on that shit. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It had, like, just a bit of crunch when you bit into the burger. It was outstanding. I always like a really nice toasted bun. It's just so nice. But my problem with toasting buns is the first one's good. Second one's good. Oh, <laughs> shit, I didn't control the heat of the skillet. Third one is black as hell. I had the opposite problem. So the first two buns were really light, uh, which is actually good because... Uh, my, my partner in crime and uh, wife happens to be. Um, happens to be. Happens to be. Just randomly. or just like, hey, married? She's like, yeah, sure, I guess. And then it was done. Um, she doesn't like a really charred toast like I like. So the fact that my buns came out like just, just a hair over like blonde. She's like, oh my God, they're perfect. I was like, okay, cool. I thought they were shit. That's, that's just fine. heated up with melted butter. Basically, yeah. But she loved it. It was good. And in mine had the good, the good dark brown tar on it. Yeah, yeah, I don't like. As long as it's not black, we're good. So just regular old burgers, all boring. Yeah, it was. It was just general burgers, standard ground beef. Uh, I think I got uh, Kraft brand. Thank you, Kraft, for the sponsorship. Not that you've given us anything, um, but you should. Um, but uh, Kraft sharp cheddar. Because when you have cheddar, you can't fuck around with that mild cheddar, right? You yes. need real, legit fucking cheddar. Yes, like, you do. Punch you in the goddamn mouth cheddar. And it was good. It was good. It wasn't amazing, but I had a good burger. I'm happy with that. Burp cheddar is the only cheddar. But I, I would like to devolve this conversation away from our intended food podcasting purpose and talk about shovels. Blue shovels, pink shovels, red shovels, purple shovels, black shovels. You missed a chance there. Red shovel, blue shovel, one shovel, two shovel, red shovel, God blue shovel. How, See, this, how could you miss that? This is why we're not professionals. Well, this is why you're not a professional. <laughs> so, Shovel Knight. I've been playing the fuck out of some Shovel Knight on the Switch, and it's still amazing, except for the airship level, because fuck that level. I was playing it over there. You saw me. It was bad. So, while we're trying to do a sound check, so our equipment's not the best. We're getting better stuff slowly over time. But so we still need to do some decent sound checks. And, you know, I'm up here all nice talking. I'm like, hey, Tom, talk. His head is all the way on the other side of the mic. He has the switch in his face. Like, what are we doing? I'm literally, for those on video, I'm like this, frustrated as fucking hell, trying to play Shovel Knight facing the switch. I, I hate the airship level. It is fucking bullshit. The whole thing. I got past it. I beat it. But goddamn, I did not like it. 
I still got to play that. Haven't picked it up. Probably still won't for a while because by the it's time really I get back to some Switch, there's going to be a lot more stuff out there for me. Yeah, Arms, hopefully. Arms coming out soon, which I, is interesting. But Splatoon. In J- July, you got Splatoon. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick up Splatoon. That's, that's already an instant buy for me. Have to have Splatoon. Arms, I'm not sold on yet. I've heard a lot of really good things about the um, motion controls on it. Worked okay. fantastic. That's good. People worry that unless you're competitive with it, you might end up running short on the game Hmm. because there's not a lot of variety necessarily in the game. There's a couple different um, game modes. Okay. But unless you're trying to get better and learn different techniques, it's just a game you might get bored with. Yeah. Like Rocket League. If you're not trying to, you know, develop better techniques, get better, in the end, you're doing the same thing for fucking hours. It sucks. Yeah. Or, Or like Dota, where you play one game and you go, wow. This is what people do with their lives. And then you go back to, you know, actually having a loving, caring family and being nice neighbors to people. You see, my problem with Dota is that's also, there's a whole type of people that are automatically <laughs> won't play it because of the length of game. Yes. And ARMS does not have that issue. ARMS is short, short games that okay. you just jump in, jump out like Splatoon or other, okay. other first person shooter. Even though this is a first person or a third person boxing Kind of guide your yeah. arms like a shooter. It's it's weird. I wanted to get in on the on their little test play, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. Um, I I downloaded it. I've got the the damn icon on my Switch, but I have not played it yet. Every trailer just I'm not sold on it. I'm not against the game. I just I don't know why they I don't know why I want it. And it's not like a like a Kojima Death Stranding esque. Oh my god, I'm buying this day one, and I have no idea why. This is a I could see myself owning that, but I don't know if I could see myself enjoying it. I think I would like it, but I don't quite know if I'm going to get it right away. Yeah, it. I'll probably wait on it. <clears throat> okay, so speaking of motion controls, Breath of the Wild. I love the ability that you can turn off the motion aiming. Now, if I'm sitting here, right, I'm sitting in a very stable environment. I don't think your floors are shifting or the house is collapsing or anything. Thankfully. I, yeah, not yet anyway. Um, there, there's like a fall. Oh, Good it's luck. Like, it's like right in front of my garage. Yeah, it's All just right. slowly opening up, demons pouring out of it. Really cool. Um, Should we call Ghostbusters back? No, no, just it, the, you've got good ambient light. I'm sure it ups the property value someone okay, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with it yeah um but i love it because i can with the motion controls on i can fine tune my aim but the vast majority of my switch time has been on the bus to and from work 40 ish hour ish commute into and out of seattle time out time out he met 40 minutes oh yeah not 40 ish hours that's um that's a little far for me to travel for work they would, the have, country. they would have to pay me a shit ton of money to get me to travel across the country every day back and forth. You couldn't cross country every day. Well, There's not enough yeah, time. Probably, probably not every day. Like every, fly every 41 hours. Like I get there, I do an hour of work, and then I do 40 hours back. It's really inefficient. I've worked for some companies where that would make sense. A lot of companies. Um, but anyway. anyway, anyway. So I'm on the bus, and the bus is like... I don't want to say rickety, but it feels rickety when you're in the bus and it sounds like, you know, you're on the the set of the Starship Enterprise when everything is going to hell and the ship is being, like, torn to shreds. Um, So leaving motion controls on is horrible because I'll have my bow and the bus will take a turn and Link will go, vroom, and he will aim the complete opposite direction of where I was trying to hit the goddamn boss. So I quickly shut that shit off. But... There are some shrines. There are some tiny little trials that use motion controls. There's no option to not use motion controls. So here I am sitting on the bus like some kind of goddamn idiot, right? Some some guy who's like got something mentally disconnected flailing my switch all around the bus, all around the people next to me because I have to get the fucking spirit orb because, oh, I, I hate that part. Spoiler alert. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's not elaborate on what you said there. Okay. Um, but yeah, so those, uh, those trials are f- interesting. Uh, there's some that are really fun. Like there's some golfing-esque ones, which I actually thought was kind of cool. 
Um, yeah, the, it's cool. I just wish I and I guess I always had the ability to leave and come back. Yes, you did. But yeah, I guess that's on me. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I just I hate the fact that that's that's an, uh, a required part of the game because it, it's it not, annoys me. It's not a required. If you want to 100 percent it, it's required, but right. it's by no means required. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I wish I had some other option to do that because I don't like flailing the switch around. It's like the, the Joy Cons, I will flail those all day long. I will throw the damn things. The switch, I have issues flailing around in an already flailish environment as a moving bus. So leave and yeah, beat it when you dock. I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there. I can't just walk away. Okay, we're gonna get off this because that is just you being the issue, yeah, not I the know. switch. Okay, so I did play. Um, everyone grabbed their uh, their beverage of choice. Uh, I played Dark Souls too, um, and I realized that going away from Dark Souls two and playing other shit has made me fucking horrible at Dark Souls. So fucking horrible. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. So you think that, oh, I left. I come back. I'm just bad. So what you're realizing is that you left. You forgot how bad you were and came back to realizing. Probably. Okay. Probably. Um, but I, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. There's, there's the drink call out. Um, so I get into Dark Souls and I see this guy. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember like kicking this guy's ass. It was like four hits. I can totally do this. And I walk up and he just takes this big ass fucking like hammer thing and smushes me into the ground and you die. And I'm like, oh fucking hell. I forgot this was Dark Souls. I'm getting so used to Breath of the Wild where I walk up and smack a guy and run away and walk up and smack him and run away. And Dark Souls is very much patience young padawan wait for your chance to strike and then stab him in the throat and uh yeah i just i was not prepared yeah watching you play i realized like if you're not very good it's going to take you a very long time to beat that game yes yeah so uh yeah, that was fun uh, i also got in a little bit of counter-strike um played some of the new maps uh those oh, are fun new maps like actual official maps or community maps well it's CSGO. So or the it's, gold token maps. Yeah. It's, it's community maps that were curated by Valve to be, you know, hey, we're, these are maps now. You should play these because they're really good. Um, so you, you could have always downloaded the maps and played them or gone to a custom server and stumbled upon the maps. They weren't hidden or secret in any way. Uh, but this is kind of Valve sanctioned at this point. Uh, but it's good. It's good. It's Counter Strike. Uh, I'm still very middle of the road, lower middle of the road. Uh, but it's fun. Uh, and then I'm sure you want to talk about this. We played some Battleman, or, so, or as as the official title is, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I don't know why they have to focus on player unknown. It's the developer. Yeah, I know why. I I don't play Shigeru Miyamoto's Breath of the Wild or or uh, Oanoa's uh, Breath of the Wild. I I don't play. Um, Psionics is Rocket League. I don't play Valve's Dota 2 or Ice Frog's Dota 2. I play Dota 2. Just call it fucking Battlegrounds. Like it, to, to me, it's like putting your name on top of like a big gaudy building in the middle of New York City and then getting elected president of the United States. It's really gaudy. It's not required at all. And it's, it's just tacky in a way. So you also have to remember... The name of the game is Battlegrounds. That's kind of super generic. So it, it there's, is. There's not a whole lot of generic names that work well. I think Battlefield's the only universally recognized one. Other yeah, than that, I mean, I, it's all kind at, of. At that point, though, your issue is the name of your game. The issue is not. Let me tack my name to it, right? Let me tack my my screen name or developer name onto my game. That doesn't help you fix anything, right? Call it. Call it like. I don't know, hunger grounds, dudes killing each other on an island, and there's a circle, the game. So this guy, though, I, I kind of get it, because he is the grandfather of this. He is the one who pretty much started it all. He did D or H1Z1. He wanted to get back in, and what better way than to say, hey, the original guy, this is it. Yeah, but I, I, at the same time. Disney so, Presents put in movie name. I, I, bought, I bought Daisy, and I played it for a good five hours i never really got into that whole genre 
uh, because it always felt too rough around the edges for me to get into. Battlegrounds is the first game that I said, okay, I could probably play this longer term. Um, but for me, who doesn't know who Player Unknown is, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds just it it seems really tacky. Uh, I, I get that some people are like, oh my god, it's Player Unknown, and he made a thing, right? It's like Sid Meier's Civilization, or Sid Meier's whatever. Yeah, I, I get that. It's still fucking tacky. I don't care if you're Sid Meier or not, right? It, take take your name out of the spotlight. Just say Civilization, or Battlegrounds, so or I, dudes killing each other in a field, the blue thing's about to kill everyone. So I'm going to say one example, and if you say anything bad about it, I swear to God, I'm going <laughs> to throw something at you. I'm um, Clancy's Rainbow Six. No, I, I, and I realize that it does go against what I just said, but it makes sense there. <laughs> it makes sense there because that is an entire universe of play style, right? When, when you say now Tom, it is. When you say Tom Clancy anything in video game form, I know I'm not going to like it. But that's now. The very first one was labeled like that. Yeah, I know. And it was still, eh, I don't know. It's just, it seems like even, especially with Tom Clancy, it's, it's brand recognition for brand recognition's sake. And hey, if it has Tom Clancy on the box, it'll sell more copies than if it doesn't, right? I, I just don't care. I'm not going to buy Guy Fieri knives if they're shit knives, right? Player Unknown doesn't do anything to me because I don't know who Player Unknown is. It's, yeah, yeah. The, the people who are going to recognize Player Unknown as who that person is and say, oh my God, Player Unknown made a game, already knows Player Unknown, already knows what types of games this person makes, and already knows that they probably like them or don't, right? They probably already have the, the mindset of, here's this thing, here's this, this universe that I am already intimately aware of. The marketing doesn't help me in any way. If anything, it could hurt someone, right? So if a game says Tom Clancy, I know I'm not going to buy it. It could be a great game. I could love that game. And if it didn't have Tom Clancy on the box, I might have bought it. But because it does, I'm not going to. Because I'm, I'm expecting something. Yeah, but it's... I think it's branding as well. This guy wants to just kind of get his name out there, let it be known. Yeah, It's like an I artist signing their name to the bottom part of the painting. You're defacing a beautiful piece of art with your fucking name. Isn't isn't that in in the credits and in the first like twenty seven logos when you turn on a PC game that that show up because you've got you know Nvidia, Unreal, uh, you know whatever cupcake shop that you happen to shop at, you know, all these different logos flashing in for ten minutes while your game boots up. At least that's how it is in most PC games that I play. Yeah, um, we'll just go ahead and say we disagree. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I but also either Doom. way, either way though, um, Battleman, there was yes. some big updates on this. So Thursday marked the very first performance update. So last Thursday was gameplay and all that nice stuff, but they actually did some performance updates on their server this Thursday, as well as fixing some minor bugs, some small optimizations. So the game is actually running better. Um, it, That's good. It's great to see they are not just trying to add content they're trying to better the game as well so this month is the way it sounds is going to be all optimizations i don't know if they're going to have one next week but the next release is also supposed to be another server side optimization thing they did some stuff that would help client side so your computer's a little better as well as the uh server side so yeah, okay. that's good. That's good. Did did they fix spectator mode yet? No, that I that's going to so. be uh, later down the line. I think. Yeah, it's it's not. It's the one thing that's highly visible to players, but the one thing that matters the absolute least, right? It's like if a color on your logo is fucking annoying, someone's going to be like, "Wow, that color is shit," and you're going to be like, "Yeah, it doesn't. It literally doesn't affect the game in any way." So we're we're going to fix the gameplay stuff first before we move on. But it's it's good. I'm glad to see that. They're not saving all the bugs for last because that's a quick way to drive away your player base. Oh, and it's not just the bugs. They've been doing the bugs constantly. It's, it runs smoother now. You don't hang as much when you're getting off your um, uh, parachute. Oh, they, they've done good. quality of life stuff that, well, not just quality of life, just it runs better. I mean, there's no other easier way to say it than it. It just runs better. Okay. Um, it wasn't drastic, but it was some, and it's just going to keep getting better. So, um, 
you you might know this you might not Do, does player unknown is that still a one-man shop does he have people helping is he contracting stuff out i do not know the okay. shape of that development team i okay. think it's a team all right because as much as they've been changing as quick it's it has yeah. to be a team i i would only imagine that there's a bunch of people involved in that game if that is one man doing that job that man is a god I mean, not to get the initial game out, because, yeah, you take as long as you want, but yeah. these updates. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're coming at a quick, quick pace. Uh, you know, one, one more thing on, on Battlegrounds before we move on to, to other things. Um, the fact that there's an early access game that I'm, I'm talking about with, you know, in a positive light with praise is kind of amazing to me. It's been a very long time since I've played an early access game that uh, I felt was worth it in the early access stage. I've got four of them. Um, Kerbal, Prison Architect, Battlegrounds. And Factorio. Okay. All right. I never and got into Factorio. You should have let me do the order. <clears throat> because um, <laughs> actually, another reason I brought that up is one of those is no longer an indie shop. and oh, is no longer oh, owned by themselves. Right. Um, Kerbal was just purchased by Take-Two, um, which is very interesting to me. Because Kerbal is a complete project. Kerbal is shipped, and Kerbal development team is known for uh, very rough on employees, which Take Two Interactive already had a little bit of a ruffle with. Yeah. So it's just interesting that they would pick up a game that's probably already seen the bulk of its sales. I'm wondering if they're planning on using this engine, because this is such a big physics engine that if you can actually harness that for other games a big publisher could do some really cool shit with that yeah it it could i'm wondering what kind of reusable stuff they can pull out of kerbal or or if they're going to take this and make uh like a huge kerbal 2 or or even um kerbal is only on pc right I think they tried to do ports to console and it did not go well. Okay. Well, if, if anyone is going to, and, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the name take two, um, I totally get it. The public brands, the public facing labels out of take two are 2k, which are most famous for a bunch of their sports games, which tend to be great. Um, and rockstar, yes. which fucking everyone knows. But if anyone's going to make a fantastic console game, from a great, amazing PC game, it's fucking Rockstar, right? But you're taking this differently. Rockstar is known, hey, this is going to be different because Rockstar and 2K are actually two different companies underneath the same umbrella. Right. But even then, Rockstar is not known for PC. Rockstar is known for console to PC. That's true. That's, that's, a, true. that's a different animal. Uh, but the, I, I guess my point being that... Um, the, the Kerbal development team were PC first and PC only, right? That's where they were born and bred. They didn't have the breadth of experience necessary to put out a console release. Rockstar does. And they've got the money behind them. They've got a shit ton of money. Yes, but I don't... Th I think that that game is so massive that I'd rather see them make a new than try to get it running great on PC or on console. Because that game takes a huge amount of RAM, a huge amount of CPU usage, and I think that's part of the reason why the, the um, console port did not go well. Yeah, it, it could be. RAM is a huge limitation in consoles, uh, if, if you guys listening don't know. Um, you know, your, your standard... What's the standard gaming PC build now? Is it 8 gigs of RAM, or has that moved to 16? I think 8 is the... The go to but okay. 16 is quite common okay yeah because i i was i've been at 16 for a while but you know your your average console like what the 360 had like 512 super small yeah it was it wasn't even a gig um now the newer consoles like the xbone and the ps4 i want to say those are four gigs I'm, I'm gonna look this up just to be sure uh but it's still it's way way under what you would see in a standard gaming rig yeah but i mean there's you can't go apples to apples with consoles because that hardware is highly specialized and optimized to run together. That's Where true. Where PCs are designed to plug and play different pieces, these consoles are made for the parts that are in it. And and I was I was wrong. Uh, it looks like the uh, at least for the Xbox One, it's got eight gigs of RAM. 
And I think that is increased by four gigs on the Scorpio that is to launch quarter three. I don't think they still have a hard release date, but I think it's quarter three this year. Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to say. But I, I would like to see this get a wider audience because Kerbal, Kerbal deserves the audience that Minecraft has, right? It's it's a giant ass sandbox. Um, it It's extremely educational. It's a wonderful game in every single way. Uh, yeah, the controls are a little obtuse. It's, I mean, being an indie game, some parts are a little rough around the edges, but I adore Kerbal Space Program. I would like to see it, if this if they actually expand, maybe make a new one, mix a little bit of Elite Dangerous in with it, and not in the dogfighting aspect, but in like <laughs> actually having objectives. You're actually going to be a cargo ship. You actually yeah. have to build up a ship to transport goods. That would be great. And I think it'd be really fun, but still leave the quirkiness because part of the beauty of Kerbal is the Kerbals. It is the, yep. these things are kind of silly and when they die, it's funny and it's always fun and lighthearted. Yeah. So I would it's, like, it's not, oh my God, the, the challenger exploded sort of stuff. It's, oh my God, he totally splatted into the moon. That's hilarious. So, I mean, it's, I'm interested to see what happens. I yeah. think this Kerbal is dead, and I think that they're going to do something with the IP as well as the engine. Okay. That that would also be interesting. But either way, developers of Kerbal, uh, I'm glad to see someone you know big like Take-Two grab them up uh, because you know, Take-Two is a very respected brand. Um, hopefully, they'll pay them gobs and gobs and gobs of money. Uh, and yeah, it's it's good. At least I think. I think it's good. We'll have to see if it's really yeah. good. So, um, have you been playing anything else? Yes, I have been playing Doom. Again. Again. Yes, I've been I've been playing some Doom. Uh, I reinstalled that, which I was so excited. I was like, "Oh fuck yeah! I'm gonna install Doom. I'm gonna play it." And I, you know, double clicked on the gaming PC and Steam went to install it, and I didn't realize it. It's like 66 gigs. So I had to wait. Yeah. Lucky for me, I've got good internet. That that would have been you know like a four hour, five hour download before, but now it was about an hour and 10 minutes which is still fucking long for me to you know get from zero to doom but it was doom uh so i started on nightmare mode and yeah i couldn't get past the first stage yeah i'd like to try that at some point i liked it when i played with you it's very quick it honestly the speed of it makes me think of like unreal tournament yes only much more polished and to look at more beautiful yeah, in a very grungy, like bloody, helly kind of beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it feels like Unreal Tournament. It looks like Doom. Yes, yes, but, yeah, that's a good way to put for, it. For the controls, absolutely feels like Unreal Tournament. It is fast. It is jumpy. It is, uh, you know, jump and dodge. And I I had read somewhere that um, when playing on Nightmare Mode, you don't use the glory kills because they're too slow. You stand in one place too long and you die. I was like, no, nah, that's got to be an exaggeration. And I glory killed a dude, and his buddy lit me on fire. Like, they weren't fucking around. You don't play Doom on Nightmare Mode the same way you played you know, Doom on any other difficulty. So I backed it off to the, the one less. It's not hurt me plenty. It's ultra-violence. I fucking love just everything about Doom. I love the difficulty scales. Oh, it's, it's like, great. I'm a wimp. Hurt me. Yeah. Like, do me nasty, kill me, blah blah those that, kind of names. That started um, with, uh, I want to say Wolfenstein did that. They had various names for it. And, of course, the icons change when you get harder. Well, yeah, because the guy's face, like, I remember the guy's face is, like, at first is normal. And then, like, he starts to get more and more blood the harder yeah. the difficulty. Yeah, it's it's pretty rad. So, ultraviolence is good. Uh, I'm slowly chugging my way through that. And it's still fucking rad. I love that game. Uh, but that is all I've been playing of note. So for me, it's been the Battleman like I talked about. But Battle um, Man. also, and also for the record, if you hear us say Battleman over man, something like that, really stupid. Man, man. It's because one of our friends has conditioned us to drop the last <laughs> syllable of a game's name and put the word man in it. Overman, Battleman. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. So if you hear that. Counterman. We're sorry. We're stupid. And man, our friend man. has conditioned us. But... Um, <laughs> Actually, I picked up an old game that I haven't played in a while that I love. Um, Total Annihilation. I saw you installed that. Yeah. Oh, I've had it on there for a while. I just haven't played it in a while. Okay. So it's probably one of my favorite games ever. It's in my top 
three hands down. It's my introduction to RTS is I find it to be a lot better than StarCraft in that it has doesn't have the restrictions that StarCraft does. You can still micromanage just like you do in StarCraft, but you can actually move mass soldiers at once. That's nice. Which is really cool. It's always a thing that bugged me about StarCraft. It's just, just let me pick everyone. Everyone go this direction. So I have to have control groups. Yeah, and, and you uh, can control group in this too. So, But you can have control groups of, I have my 50 fighter planes yeah. in one, my bombers in another, and this another. And then you can actually have like two different bomber divisions and they yeah. all have 25 each. I mean, that's, that's the nice way to play. I play it like a drunken Russian general, right? I want to zoom out. I want to see every living soul that belongs to me drag to one corner to the next and say, okay, everyone, you're going to go kill this thing. I don't care how many of you die. I don't care how many it takes. You're going to kill it. Run. So total annihilation is so Starcraft has it too. I mean, all good RTSs do with the rock, paper, scissors system. Yes. Um, but this one is a little rough. And by rough, I mean, it punishes you if you do it wrong. Really? So their anti-air towers are super fucking good. Hmm. You're not going to get your bombers in there. Okay. Unless you have thousands of bombers that you're dropping on them, you need to get ground people in there and take them out. Or you need to get your, um, your light fighter jets that don't do a lot of damage, but they move fast enough not to get hit as much. So, I mean, the rock, paper, scissor element doesn't allow you to just go unless you have such a force that rock, paper, scissor doesn't matter because I'm just going to bring thousands and thousands of bodies at you. Okay. Uh, did you ever play Advance Wars? I know I've talked about it once on this podcast. No. Okay. So, my favorite tactic in Advance Wars was uh, there's this CO, Sammy, and one of her perks was she got standard, the bog standard first infantry unit at a cheaper price than her peers. So what I would do is I would literally flood the map with level one infantry. So in advanced wars, when your opponent is occupying a space, you can't move through it. So what I would do is I would just blockade with human bodies, just pile the bodies as tall as they can go onto, onto all of the squares of the map to literally drown out my opponent. It took forever. I mean, I threw hundreds of people at tanks and the tanks would mow them down every time, but but it knocked off like two percent every battle, and I just whittled that shit down. That's wonderful. That's that's how I play. This is I, why I'm not in the armed forces because that's the kind of stuff be dead. I would do. Yeah. You see, to me, I walk my towers, my defensive towers out, and I eventually beat you that <laughs> way. I pummel you to death by letting you throw yourself at my defenses. But for those who don't know, quick We're backdrop on this. Total Annihilation. It's one of the first three D, uh, like truly three D RTSs where terrain was a thing. And not just terrain is in the way that you can't get through it, but terrain is in a way it's you get up on top of it. You shoot down from it. People can't hit you if you're at the right spot on it. That kind of terrain usage. Nice. Um, as well as all the units are really nice 3D, all robotic. Um, a co- two things that people know that TA was spawned or spawned out of TA. Supreme Commander, which was a Sawyer game, which who was one of the co-founders of Cave Dog who made Total Annihilation. Hmm as well as Planetary Annihilation, which was seen as the actual direct sequel to it. Um, Supreme Commander, a lot of people loved it. It was a fantastic game. Planetary Annihilation. Um, kind of died. And then they built a different one? It of? got bad reviews because they did it early access, and they did it the way you should, and you incrementally increase it. Yeah. But people, when they started, were like, this isn't right. This isn't right. Yeah. It, and they got shit on with reviews. So to avoid the bad reviews, they made a new game, which in practice is terrible. Yeah. I think it's vile. It's just they were getting nailed on stuff that wasn't right to get nailed on being early access. Yeah, it was. I Wasn't that a Kickstarter? Yes. Yeah. So I, I Kickstarted that game, and I was I was very disappointed in it. Um, even going back to play it, uh, it was most of my issues were performance related and and uh, balance related. So I would get just like you should do in an RTS. I would get into a game with a computer opponent and try to learn the ropes that way. That's StarCraft. That's how you do it in Warcraft. You you battle shitty CPU comp- uh, opponents before you go online. They're not shitty. Oh no, they wrecked my shit every single time. Like I would have like two or three buildings and they come after me with like this giant army. I'm like you cheated they literally cheated until i put a bunch of computers on the map and watch how they build things they're literally perfect they're literally doing you know 600 moves per minute 
Oh, it was fun. Oh, Adam and Jesus I would go Christ. across a lot of them. We would do like 2v2v2v2 2v2, 2v2 oh, v2 with computers. It was really fun. But either way, that's where that come from. I just wanted to kind of give that lineage. And um, also played a little bit of Rocket League. And as we hinted at, the Rocket League championship is currently going on in Los Angeles. And two of our very own are there. And in fact, two of our very own are with us right now. I think we have Adam and Josh here with us now. Hey, guys, can you hear us? Yes, Hello. yes, we can. So how's it out there in L.A.? How's the Rocket Man? Oh, it is absolutely beautiful. It's wonderful. We're having an excellent time. So um, how have the games been so far? I was watching a little bit today, and I saw there was a couple really, really good series. Yeah, there's been some excellent series. Um, in particular, the flip side versus selfless match yesterday was some of the best Rocket League I've ever seen. It was so intense, and... You can't. You probably can't hear it on the stream, but the energy in the room is just explosive. It's really, nice. really cool. And speaking of energy, NRG with all of their 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 hype generated in that state. Oh my god, it's amazing. So, so I've been watching just just a little bit today uh, of the the losers bracket, as we call it in in Dota, the lower bracket. Um, I've got to ask, is there less hype today because it's elimination rounds or are the stakes that much higher and people are more hyped about it? I think it's a little bit less hype today because the teams, the big name teams that people are watching so much, okay. um, especially yesterday with Jam Gaming not doing very well. And then it's pretty, basically all the games today are, are the, the teams that are expected. As seen as lesser teams, I think. So okay. we, we even noticed there some people were like leaving to go get food or something in the middle of the matches today just because they weren't interested. The yeah, first I, four, however, the first four today were were huge games. Yeah, yeah really big, excellent. fantastic games. I was just say you had um, Mocket but, playing this but, morning, didn't you? They did. Mocket, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Both of them. Yeah, I, I remember I was watching uh, NRG versus uh, Northern. And man, that did not go anywhere how I that, thought. Yeah, that was a that was a, a really really good series. It, it's cool to see NRG winning, right? Because, because they did so poorly the last two lands. They basically got knocked out immediately the last two lands. So it's really nice to see them winning some games. The crazy thing about that too is the fact that uh, NRG has won every single online uh, uh, championship for the RLCS. So. They are. They go in every year as the number one seed for North America, and they always get knocked out by Northern Gaming in the very <laughs> beginning. <laughs> okay. First round, and this time, they, their first game they go up against is Northern Gaming, oh and they end up knocking them out. It's it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. So I have to ask. So um, Sydney, um, I can't remember the name. The Australian team, Alpha Sydney. Sydney. Alpha, Alpha Sydney. Sydney, oh my god. So someone please explain to me how the hell this guy plays with a mouse and keyboard. Whoa, hold I on, I did not see this. Practice, well. practice I guess. Yeah, Torsos, uh, the cap team captain for Alpha Sydney plays keyboard and mouse. And he's, Jesus. I mean, you watch him play and he's just as capable as everybody else is. He's, he's really good. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, I was baffled whenever I first heard that. I was just thinking, so you, like, you don't have the analog control. You don't have the ability to, to tap or to slow your roll, or you have your mouse. No, I, for, as far as the movement keys goes, it's just you have to make a bunch of little taps, or you know, make. There's no there's no analog input at all. Right. So you just, don't have a dead zone either. Yeah. And yes. There's no dead zone either. So that's really interesting um, to me. There, there I, are I, probably a couple of advantages, but. I wouldn't say one of the biggest ones is that your half your half flips are as clean as they can be. Um, you, some, you, you can usually tell whether someone's playing keyboard and mouse just mm -hmm. by the, how the way the, the way they half. There there are certain advanced mechanics in Rocket League that can be made easier by you know all or nothing digital inputs. So a quick insight to those who don't know Rocket League: when he's saying a half flip in Rocket League, you flip to gain speed, and sometimes you're retreating, so you're back flipping. There's a trick you can do to, you can stop your backflip halfway to where your noise, nose is pointing backwards and barrel roll to land on your wheels and start driving forward without losing yeah, any quick, momentum. Yeah, it's a very I quick way to Star turn Fox once. <laughs> you, you <did> barrel roll. <laughs> 
so for you guys those right are, now, aren't those alien rules though <laughs> yes those yes. aren't barrel rules <laughs> it's, not, it's not a barrel roll so for you guys who is your favorite going into tomorrow favorite going into tomorrow oh, oh man That's... i'm i'm torn between nrg and Flipside. i've always been a flip side fan because i like the players and i've been watching them a long time but based on the fact that NRG has done so poorly at the LAN events before, I'd really like to see them take it too. I think they deserve it. How do you think Leftovers right now, is really going to do? Uh, what was that? How do you think Leftovers are going to do? Right now, I, it looks like they're having a pretty a pretty tough time versus Alpha Sydney, seeing as they're bringing to overtime and they're tied up at oh, the man. moment. <laughs> Oh, so, on, the, uh, on the elimination game? One, what was that? On an elimination game? Uh, n no, no, no. This is just the uh, next game. Okay, so okay. They're, they're tied up as far as wins. So you have a win on each side. And right now it's in overtime. And uh, Alpha Sydney's trying to uh, trying to seal the deal. They're, they're putting up some good numbers versus some really, really, really good teams. Yeah. Giving them a really hard time. No one saw that coming. So... so Part of me is rooting for them as an underdog, but I mean, really, it's for me, it's NRG. I'd like to see, I like to see Rogue do well because uh, they're definitely a fan favorite. Anytime Sis is out out there, everyone loses <laughs> their freaking minds. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a really good energy. See what I thought was great watching the NRG uh, Northern Gaming. Man, that crowd was right behind NRG. Yeah. That was insane. They were, they, it was so loud in there, people chanting them, cheering them on, and I think that really made the difference. Well, That's I mean, just, awesome. just imagine but, um, being the other team. This isn't like Dota, where you're in a soundproof room. Yep. You're on an open-air stage sitting behind a computer facing the crowd. You hear the yeah. crowd in like 100% of the crowd rooting on your opponents. Yeah, it, it looks it looks like uh, they run it the same way they run some of the CSGO competitions that I've seen. Um, so I've, I've got a question for you. Um, does it look like the arena is totally like booked solid, sold out? Are they going to have to get a bigger place next year? Or is this venue going to work going forward? Is it going to get bigger? Or is it going to stay the same size? I was like, this, I mean, uh, it seems like it's getting bigger. Um, the, the venue was sold out. Okay. And uh, I've seen over a hundred thousand viewers on Twitch, which is more than it's Good ever been. God. So. Yes, that's the, huge. There was just as many people watching today as playing today. Yeah, yeah. which is impressive. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. But um, we're we're actually at dinner right now, so we'll we'll segment into a really quick seventy-two food connector, and then we're yes, gonna have please. to go. We are at Korean barbecue at a place called Juko Juku or something. It's hard to pronounce. Juko Juku Juku. And this is our first time having Korean barbecue, and it is absolutely incredible. I cannot overstate that. <laughs> did you get Did you get bulgogi? Bulgogi? I don't know what all we have. It's It's all very confusing. <laughs> okay. But there's a whole bunch of condiments all over the table, and we're, there's a meat. We're cooking the meat on the table. Oh, really? And nice. Yeah. So basically, there's a big scorecard with meats on it and you tell them three meats that you want and they bring it out and throw it on the grill that's in the middle of your table and you just kind of go at it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really good. It's it's getting on par with Ribs Fest, so I, I might be uh, converted to a Korean barbecue. <laughs> so, so on a scale of 1 to 72, how good is it? Oh, this is, this is up there in the at least 70. Okay. All right, good. It's ridiculous. It's so good. Well, okay. Well, but, uh, thanks for having us. We're going to get back to it. Yeah, thanks for uh, representing 72 out there. Um, you'll have to come back next week and tell us how it all shapes out. Damn right. Definitely. We'll do. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Right. Game yeah. off, fellas. See you, guys. See you. So that was 72 Pin Connector live from RLCS, or actually right now at break at the Korean Barbecue right by RLCS. Did you, did you get something. Yeah, I'm not even going to try. Yeah, no. Korean barbecue restaurant in Los Angeles next to the place where RLCS is being played. Yeah. Go eat. Enjoy. Yes, that, that stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I was watching a good bit of it today. Um, I will say it was kind of baffling to me in the low, low, lower bracket. There was one game I was watching where the play, it was fine. But man, compared to the upper teams, you just know those teams are there because they're in the top like 16. Yeah. But looking at it, it's like, yeah, you're not the top five teams. There is, even in this elite of a tournament, 
the disparity between the very top and the very bottom is still steep. I wonder if um, we'll see what's what's happened to Dota recently shake out in Rocket League, because as the tournaments get bigger, as the price pool increases, as the amount of people who who watch this event and attend this event grow, um, you know, in, in Dota, the the skill gaps between the teams has gotten so small. Like, you know, the, the differences between the two top teams at, at any international is so just tiny. It comes down to pure strategy and outthinking your opponent. Are we going to see that in Rocket League? I, I sure hope so. It, it makes the games way better to watch. You go into it not knowing who's going to win, and both teams equally deserve it. As this continues to grow, I think you're just going to get more players into the system which means you're just going to start getting more top end players. It's just going to work out like that. People are going to play it like they do Madden, like they do NC or uh, they don't do NCAA anymore, but like they do Madden and FIFA where you're just going to eventually start getting really good people. Cause there's just so many playing it. I, uh, I totally think we were right on the money when we were saying that rocket league is the esports. Right? It will it's, be. It's going to take over overwatch. It's going to take over Dota. This is going to be the thing to watch. Well, something I forgot to ask them, we'll have to get on next week, is um, they have an actual corporate sponsor for like real life commercials during their Twitch stream. There yeah, are legit commercials, odd. and some of them are 100% Rocket League centric commercials. Yeah, they were, they were using Rocket League terminology. And, and from a, a person who's not you know deep into the Rocket League meta or community, I don't know if they were. If it was cringeworthy, I don't know if they were, if it was appropriate, uh, but it was definitely Rocket League based commercials. It was cringeworthy because they had the casters who didn't, well, the one seemed more comfortable than the other, but you have non actors acting. They're not used to it. So you have that aspect. But okay. other than that, I mean, brisk. A, it's a little bit weird, but that's a mainstream brand. Yeah. It's sponsoring Rocket League. It's kind of odd. Uh, I, I saw. Um, the new, you know, Transformers ninety seven is, is yeah. sponsoring them, which, you know, I, I guess I guess that's a good thing. They got some money out of it. Um, who was there? There were some big names. Um, so Dobby brought up that that Dota and CS:GO never be passed. It's not always about the money. You have to think this is a more consumable game. This Rocket yeah. League is so much more consumable to the masses than CS:GO and Dota. So so I. You know, I could definitely see Rocket League's prize pools eclipsing CSGO's easily, easily. Because CSGO, for as big as it is, it isn't anywhere near Overwatch or Dota in terms of esports hype. Um, and, but, you know, with, with Dota's prize pools, it, it is a good point that Valve fronts the vast majority of that money. That said, um, you know, I, I don't think, I think the player base is going to watch more Rocket League. Right. Will... They're, they're going to care more about Rocket League than they will about Dota. About Dota. Uh, Dota fans are very passionate about Dota, about the game, about the players, about the meta. Um, but my mom's never going to watch Dota, right? I can never convince my father to sit down and watch a game of Dota. I convince him to watch a game of Rocket League, A, because the game doesn't take an hour, and B, because he would actually understand what the fuck's going on. Well, and also just think, Dota, computer, very niche. Yes. Rocket League, multi-platform, easily accessible it's sports a lot of people like it. it is yeah. more accepted of a game by more players because it just hits a wider market and it may be smaller than dota now but you have to remember how many years old is dota 2 right rocket league's in its third year and it's already pulling a hundred thousand viewers on twitch it just and not we're not talking rocket league count we're talking one stream hundred thousand hundred thousand viewers uh, we'll, we'll have to see where it shakes out. Um, and I, I am as, you know, as big of a Dota fanboy as anyone else. Uh, but you know, we, we gotta be realistic here. The sports, the esports scene is not going to grow if we get more hyper Dota 2 nerds yes. in, right? It's the esports scene will grow when, you know, my brother who doesn't give two shits about esports, right? He, he likes wow raids, but that's about it. Uh, when he can sit down and go, holy shit, that was an excellent goal. That dude totally flew through the air and just punted the ball into the goal. That was rad, right? With Dota, it's just like there's a bunch of flashing magical shit and what the hell, four people are dead and the other guy is limping away. What happened? 
Yeah, and it, it doesn't take a it's doesn't take a whole lot to understand what's going on in Rocket League. No, not at all. Anyone who understands sports understands Rocket League automatically. I mean, you might have questions about why in the fuck are their cars flying, but when the ball goes through the goal, you know it's a goal. Right. So mostly because it explodes and there's a big buzzer and rah! yep, just like that. Okay. So anyway, um, I think we got a little bit of news and then we'll get out of here. We do. So um, there was a game that I know you and I and Tate and uh, Adam played a ton of. And Jesse. And, and Jesse, it. yes. Payday 2. It was a oh great game. God, it was so good. It was so good. Well, the developers are back and they're making a co-op <sighs> survival horror game in a fashion and it's called GTFO. That is the name of the game. I do not trust them any farther than I can throw. Payday 2 was... So, Payday 1 was a great game, but it felt like a tech demo. It felt like, hey, we've got this idea. Here it is. Is this any good? And everyone loved it, right? But it, it was so limited on content, you could see everything you needed to see in the game in 20 hours. Payday 2 oozed content. Just levels and loadouts and strategies and... and the people you're playing with, it was all so great. And for those of you who have never played Payday, it is a, uh, a game where you are robbing banks with you and three of your buddies. So four-player online co-op, go rob a bank, jewelry store, whatever. Uh, you are professional thieves. You've got, you know, zip ties, you can take hostages, you've got lock picks. There's, there's a bunch of cool stuff. You can approach uh, a situation extremely stealthily, sneak your way through, or you can blow up the fucking mall with grenades. And that's what we did. Just fun. Yeah. Um, but the issue is the whole thing became pay to win. Very quickly. Well, not very quickly. You have to remember what happened is it got sold. Another company got yeah. involved. Yeah, and that's I what happened. Clarify. So that's why I wanted to stop you when I knew where you were going on this tangent. Yeah. And it's not quite right because that's not them. They sold it. So is the, this is the original... This is the original devs of okay, Payday so 1 and Payday 2. If they never sell GTFO, it could be a good game. If they do sell it, abandon fucking ship. So as of right now, very little is known. All they've teased at is they have a release, or, a release trailer, which is just a teaser, nothing in it. And um, they've hinted at the fact that this is a game and it's co-op to the degree of if someone tries to lone wolf it, they die. Okay. And it's supposed to be a horror survival. Hopefully it's not like the forest kind of stuff, but actually it could be good. I have faith in them because I felt that the gameplay in Payday was fresh. It was very involving. And like you said, there was hundreds of ways to approach one situation and they all could work. Yeah. I, I remember sitting there with you guys on top of a shipping container. We were scoping out guard movement patterns to figure out how we were going to get to the boat with all of our money. And yeah, we, we weren't caught yet, it, but it was so fucking stressful. And then that one guard, that one guard, that fucking stupid idiot took that turn and looked up and we got the, the alert noise and there he was. And I took him out with a silenced pistol, but it was too late. His buddies were on to us and we had to fucking hightail it. I think we got one person and maybe two bags of money out of there before we were all dead. So to me, the only time I was able to really do stealth is Adam and I got really good at stealth. We nice. were doing like the Tierra stuff where you had to actually drill out stuff. We was able to do it stealthily, get in and out, not be detected. Other than that, man, it was just put on the heavy armor and let's just fucking have fun. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. I, I love Payday 2, and I wish I could go back to those days when it wasn't shit. But, uh, you know, af after you're right, it did get sold. Uh, after it got sold, it quickly devolved into, uh, hey, here's 15 DLC packs. Uh, and if you buy all 15, you're invincible and you win everything. Um, if you don't buy anything, you're worthless and you'll get kicked from games, which happened pretty regularly. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, I have we'll faith see. in this. Um, here's a little fun one. So Rhyme was recently released, like I think at this, at this point, like 10 days ago, something like that. It's a new game on Steam. It's a contentious art game. Pretentious, not contentious. <laughs> what the fuck, Eric? But yes, it's a very beautiful game. And they have Davino or De, 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 Novo? De Novo DRM. So it's supposed to be one of the best. But the Always online kind of bullshit. Yeah, we all know and hate DRM. But yep. it serves a purpose, blah, 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 whatever. Not the point here. Rhyme developers promised that as soon as this got cracked, they would remove it. 
And this is a five days. This is a DRM later. that is supposed to be very good. Blah de blah. This set the record, and five days after the game released, the DRM was broke. Wide open. So now the developer's like, well, we don't see us updating the game anytime soon. This is, this is just fucking bullshit. It's what it is. This is, this is uh, people, you know, them putting out a promise, hoping to get more sales from people like me who are going to be like, look, I'm not installing spyware or always online DRM into my system. Take your pretentious art game and shove it. Um, you know, it, basically goading them into buying the game, saying, hey, it, it will be DRM free sometime. Now go fuck yourself. Uh, and then totally walking back on their promise. So uh, the funny thing is, uh, DeNovo, uh, the company behind the software, the last time this happened, it's such a quick time frame, uh, they said, no, that's that's okay. We won, right? We got five whole days without it being cracked. We did our job. <sighs> I, well. I get it. It's, it's shitty, but yeah, I, I get it. The, the issue is that this shit will always be cracked, right? There's never an uncrackable system. There's never unbreakable DRM. The, the shit's going to be on the Pirate Bay in a week, regardless, right? Yes, and I have no problem with them trying to prevent that. I, I do when it affects me, right? So, so just like with Mario Run, right? When I'm getting That's into, different. into the fucking elevator. Or, or no, but it's not. It's not different no, at all. Because all this does is tie into Steam's DRM. That is all this DRM system does is no, tie into Steam. No, DeNovo does not do that. DeNovo That's all it was doing with Rhyme. Okay, then they have flags. Uh, DeNovo can do always online checks. So if your internet blips out for a minute or their servers blip out for a minute, it kills your game. From what I was reading on this article, all they were doing was Steam checks. Okay. To make sure you're still tied to the Steam framework. That's still that's still retarded. Well, then Steam DRM is too, then. Yeah, to some extent it is. Um, I enjoy the fact that they do have an offline mode. I've used it. I use it all the time. Uh, but I I get why it's there. But it's If they allow you to play offline, piracy, there is nothing wrong with DRM. Piracy is not a technological problem. Piracy is a fucking business problem. It always has been. Not anymore. You yourself have said some really shitty things about, I will download a game. Oh, and yeah, play. yeah. If, if that shit's on, on Uplay or tied to Origin specifically, fuck yes. Fuck them. I'm not doing that. But You'll do it for Steam, but not Uplay. Yeah, yeah, because fuck Uplay, right? Play, Why? Play on the same ground that everyone else is playing on. I'm not jumping through your goddamn hoops. I'm not launching 27 programs. Uplay fucking gives me, you know, ads in games saying, oh, hey, you should buy this little pack that turns your character green. No, go to hell. Games do that. That's not Uplay. That's games. I, I get that in games on Steam. Ubisoft does that. And I'm not, I'm not going to reward that, right? I'm voting with my dollars. I'm not going to buy a Ubisoft game. I'm not going to buy a game that's exclusively on Origin. It gets to the point where people hate anything that's not Steam. Yeah, and I, I get that. And I actually, I've been buying a lot more games that are off Steam, right? I buy games from GOG a lot. I buy a ton of games. I buy games on itch.io. Um, well, what I'm getting at is a platform. If, the pl if they're building a platform that's not Steam, people automatically say you're evil. We don't want to go to you. We want to stay at Steam. Not necessarily. I think the issue with stuff like Origin and Uplay is they are, um, I don't want to say specific, but they are uh, publisher-centric. Right? Well, that's all they are. They're publisher platforms. Yeah, that's... Just like that's Battle.net. That's fucking ridiculous, right? I'm not going to pay for that. I don't, I'm not going to play in their walled garden because I, I don't have to. Right. Uh, I wouldn't. Well, then if they say this is our game, we want you to play here. You have to. No, you should I, not be able to break their game. That is wrong. If they say this is how my game's to be played, then don't buy it if you I'm, don't want to do gonna it. I'm going to wait until they, they give up and put it on Steam and then buy it there or, or buy it on the console where they can't put you play on it. Right. Uh, I, I buy tons of games on GOG uh, specifically to get away from any you know platform nonsense. And even even GOG has a platform now now they yes. don't lock you into it though right the, the games are still executables they're still drm free they're untagged in any way um and the thing you get is you get the ability to auto update if you want to you can uncheck the box uh, i am all for competition with steam but they have to offer me something other than you can play assassin's creed there has to be a benefit for me there well, if there's not i'm not gonna buy it I mean, EA has some good games on there. Yeah. It, it, and it, so does Origin. The, the games, 
are are or what you're there for yeah but they're they're not enough to push me to the platform yes but what i'm saying is if you like a game you shouldn't shy away from it because it's not on steam i do though and and a lot of other people do too right i'm not the only person that says oh this is origin only i'm just not going to buy it right the the barrier to entry if you already have an account somewhere uh, right this is why i buy shit on amazon and not on you know bob's video game emporium.net or whatever right because even if bob offers me two-day shipping to a locker that's at a grocery store right next to my house and i can go and pick it up and bob's a really great guy and he's gonna give me exactly what i want at a good price i don't want to make an account on bob's site i don't want to put my credit card number into bob's site because i just don't care enough because i can go over here even if it is more expensive and that's why I shop on Steam. Yes, but that doesn't mean that it makes it's it right laziness. to walk into Bob's place and steal his goods because you don't want to make an account with him. No, I, I get that. I get that. I'm not saying that piracy is morally correct. It's not. It never is. And it's not a problem with the, with the business model because the business model is the same as one that you've already adopted. The problem is your unwillingness to adopt. Yes, it's, the problem is I am unwilling to adopt the what the business wants me to do right i i'm unwilling. you've adopted it here but you won't adopt it there even though it's the same adoption yes yes absolutely i as the consumer am allowed to be stupid and picky because that's my job as the consumer yes if they won't meet me there however you can't call that a business problem then that is no, not a business problem it's absolutely a business problem it's this just, is this is why if two businesses movie, do the same exact thing and it works for one and not the other it's not a business problem it is here here's why so so Movie piracy has always been a big thing, right? Netflix comes out, and you can see the fucking torrent graphs, right? The number of people pirating movies drastically. It fucking nosedives when Netflix brings out streaming uh, because it is a business problem because people want the convenience. That's different, though, because that's also a price it's thing. A, no, it, no, it's, it's a, a price. It, no, it's a price thing. $8 a, dollars a month to be able to watch 20 movies is a lot cheaper than buying one. It, yeah, but all the movies... Video game piracy has been at the same level. If Netflix got into video games, you would see video game piracy disappear. There is one right now, and I guarantee you won't, because Xbox launched their their Netflix service I'm talking this about week. everywhere. Everywhere. Not just Xbox, not just Nintendo, not publisher-specific, right? Ubisoft can't say, oh, look, you can play every shitty Assassin's Creed game for three bucks a month. I don't care. That's physically not possible because of hardware restrictions. I, it's... It's not the same as streaming. It doesn't work like that. You, you could make it. No, you couldn't. You could. You can make that happen. How are you going to play Wii games on a computer with a mouse and keyboard? No, I'm saying you launch one platform, one management platform, and you can launch the, the software on anything you want. It, it could work. It could In work. your utopia, where all consoles narrow down to one system, it can work. My computer plays all console games. They're having issues emulating things. Certain games from the 64 still don't emulate right. That's solved now. It took a while, but it's solved now. I still have issues with, I've yet to find good cracks on, um, what was that? Either way, regardless. Update your emulator. Okay, either way. Um, and then there's one other small thing. Um, Final Fantasy VII. Um, finally, Square Enix. The remake is supposed to be coming out for a long time. It's going to be episodic, blah de blah Eventually, Square Enix comes in and says, you know what? Fuck you, third party. You suck. You're not doing this right. We're bringing it back in-house. This is surprising to me because I didn't know that they were, you know, making probably the most, the game with the most demand that Square has ever had, right? Bring Final Fantasy VII out again, please. And, and fans are just like gaga over this stuff. Um, why on earth you would trust anyone except your most sacred development team with that? Right? It's just like, hey, uh, we're building something like these temples for the Pharaoh. Can we get like these off-brand guys to do it? Cool. No, this is this is a really important game. Why did it go to a third party in the first place? Because Square Enix is working on other things, would be my guess. Because you have like uh, Dragon Quest, they've been doing a lot of that. Like they it, were also working on Final Fantasy Fifteen at the time. So okay, okay, Final Fantasy Seven or Final Fantasy Fifteen. Like in in ratio, one hundred people will buy it. Dragon Quest, anything, six people will buy it. Final Fantasy VII, 7,000 people will buy it, right? This is a bigger game than any of those as far as hype goes. Yes, but I also believe Final Fantasy XV was in the works before this was even announced. Yeah, it was. It was because they start Final Fantasy games like seven years. 
answer well because when 13 came out 15 was yeah so yeah, it, that's kind of kind of weird but you know it's square soft but you know it's i guess that's good um i still don't know how episodic how i'm going to like episodic um if they have four episodes and it's just the disc switches it'll I, work <laughs> yeah i that that would actually be a really elegant way to do that um i don't know i i still don't know how i feel about this because i love final fantasy 7 it's one of my favorite games of all time um also one other thing real quick we forgot a game that they're probably working on and not saying shit kingdom hearts they're probably cranking out that third one and they just don't, don't want to release it yet. Don't give our viewers hope. Man, I'm telling don't you. Don't give our listeners hope. I can hope. see it right now, man. It's, it's going to be EA or E3 this year. Listeners, do it's... not listen to him. He is, he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Bold prediction this year. <laughs> EA 2017 Kingdom Hearts 3 will be announced. Okay, I'm going to have an equal prediction for you. Uh, Square Enix fans, they will disappoint you again. Um, <laughs> there's, there's my bold prediction. We'll, we'll bet a nice bottle of bourbon on it, what we'll do. Oh, I ain't betting shit on that. I don't trust them to throw a fucking <laughs> stick at him. But. Um, yeah, I, I don't get why it was third party. I guess I'm glad it's being brought in-house. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Final Fantasy VII is a hard game to make today, uh, simply culturally. Like, there's a lot of shit that we were laughing at uh, back then, which is harder for a big company like Square Enix to put out... Um, and avoid negative press, right? There's they were like, making fun of cross-dressing cloud. Right, right. They were cross-dressing cloud. And you, could you put that out today? If, if I'm a big game company, I don't know if I'm comfortable putting that out today. You can cr still do the cross-dressing, but you can't approach it with the same level of humiliation that it was in the first because it can no longer be viewed that way. But that changes the, the game, right? That, that It changes the feel of it. Yes, absolutely. It, 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 it's not... Pure Final Fantasy VII is at this point, which I don't think it would ever be pure Final Fantasy VII, um, but it's different enough that I think it would hurt. And then the the little dating mini game, right? You can you can kiss Tifa, cool. You can kiss Aerith, cool. You can kiss Barrett. Could they do that today? Still, right? That one might be a little bit more acceptable, but could they really? Because back then it was a joke. It's just like, ah, he's kissing a boy. That's hilarious. I'm seven. It's it's gonna be It'll, hard to see because yeah. that was a goofy game. I mean, as, the whole game as was fucking goofy. There was some super serious ends to it, but between the super seriousness was oh my god, just lighthearted humor. It was and hilarious. I mean, a lot of the Final Fantasies are like that. I feel like the newer ones have starting to like uh, Final Angst Fantasy Corridor Ten or not Angst Corridor Ten, Angst Corridor 12. Thirteen. Twelve and on, I think, was when it started to get very self serious. I know every time I make fun of Final Fantasy XIII, someone yells at me. I can't say anything about ten. I haven't played enough of it to see if it was super serious or not. But I know like nine was 10. still super lighthearted. Ten had some lighthearted stuff to it, but it started eking into that uh, emo crying thing that Square likes doing now. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean. There was lightheartedness through the game. I'm not saying the entire game was a joke. I'm just saying they did really good about bringing things very lighthearted. And yes, the end of Final Fantasy got really brutal. And then the one thing I won't say in case someone hasn't played it was super sad. But I mean... Dude, dude, Final Fantasy VII came out like... But it's about to come back out for a whole new audience. We can't say oh, it. All right. I guess we're re-spoiling the game that came out 20 years ago. Isn't that weird how that works? Why are we on this podcast? <laughs> we're too old for this shit, man. Okay, well, and with that, I think that's pretty much a wrap for us this week. Um, you can catch us next week. Same time. Um, we'll be a full cast again, back to the normal appearance with Josh and Adam giving us a recap of the actual championship Sunday for RLCS. If you have anything you want us to talk about or some news you think is interesting, you can tweet at us at at 72 PC podcast, hashtag gaming news. And we will be filtering off that to see what everyone throws at us and would like us to talk about as well as if you would like to come see some of our content and you're not watching us live, you can go to 72 pin connector. And then until then next week at, well, I almost said West coast time. Um, 9 p.m. Eastern Saturday. Yes. You can yes. catch us live. So with that, until next week, game on. See you, everyone.